Hello and welcome to another session of Revising American West. In particular today we're looking at how the Native Americans' biggest success in battle actually led to their basic defeat in 1890. So what was the Native Indians' biggest success in battle? Well, it was the Battle of Little Bighorn. What was the cause of this battle? Well, in 1874 there were rumours of gold being found in the Black Hills in South Dakota. Uh, which was an area of land which the Sioux used to hunt on and to live on. Um, and it led to people crossing that area of land in the Black Hills in South Dakota, which broke the Fort Laramie Treaty in 1868, which gave the land to the Sioux as the Great Sioux Reservation. However, this was seen as necessary by the US settlers because they wanted to access the gold. So. This led to the main event, the Battle of Little Bighorn. What happened? Well, the president himself ordered that the Sioux Nation be either returning to their reservation or that they should be killed because it was important people were able to access the gold in the Black Hills. Um, and this led to some groups returning to the reservations, but also a huge gathering of Sioux Indians who did not return to the reservation and instead gathered in the valley of Little Bighorn. Um, overall, it's estimated there are around 1,000 teepees, 2,000 warriors, and maybe around 7,000 uh, Native Indians or Sioux people in, in total in the Valley of Bighorn. A valley is like a, a steep-sided um, place where people could live. So you can see I've drawn here for you a very steep-sided thing. There's trees on either side, and down the bottom there would have been thousands of teepees, although there's only one in my picture. So what happened? Well... Uh, the army, led by General Custer, um, amongst other generals at the time, um, had got together and they were there to make sure that the Sioux did return to their reservation. Um, and if they, if they refused to leave the Valley of Little Bighorn, then they were to be killed. And General Custer had about 600 men with him and two other officers uh, who were in charge of his army, Major Reno and Captain Benteen. What did Custer do? Well, he sent out some people initially to have a look at what was in the valley uh, and to see how much ammunition and how many troops the Indians had. And when they came back, they warned Custer that there were lots of troops, many more troops than they'd anticipated, um, and that they might be outnumbered by the Native Indians. And they also warned him that they had very good ammunition and that perhaps the um, settlers, the US settlers and the US Army, might not have enough ammunition to defeat the Native Indians. But Custer wasn't too worried about this and he ignored their warnings. What happened next? Well, Custer had a plan of attack and he had tried it before in battle and he'd often been successful. And that was to have a three-pronged attack, to attack from three different directions. Custer's plan was that he would attack uh, from the kind of going along the valley and then he'd come down into the valley to attack the native Indians, the Sioux people who were there, and simultaneously also uh, Major Reno would attack uh, down the valley from one angle and Major, sorry, Captain Benteen would attack down the valley from another angle. So the Indians would be being attacked from three different uh, sides and it would make it difficult for them to defend themselves. Well, that was his idea. Unfortunately, Custer really rushed his attack he didn't spend any time checking out what the land would be like when he got there. So Custer went along the top of the valley and came to come down and he and his troops got stuck in quicksand. Um, and uh, Reno and Benteen and uh, Custer and all of their army ended up getting slaughtered by the Sioux people. So there were actually no survivors of this battle that were um, settlers. The only survivors of the battle were the native Indians, so they're the only accounts we have of this battle. What was the outcome of this? Well, the army was completely humiliated and in fact all of them were killed. Um, but although this was the native Indians' biggest success in that they totally destroyed the US army, it wasn't entirely successful for them in the long run. Um, it also led to something called the Dawes Act in 1887. A law was passed as a result of the success of these native Indians in the Little Bighorn Valley. And the Dawes Act 
split up all the Indian land that existed, belonging to any of the Indian nations, not just to the Sioux people, and it split it up into 160 pieces, 160 sections. And only some of these sections of land were actually given back to the native Indians. A lot of the land was also given to other white settlers to live on. Um, and so this led to the Indians having less land than they'd had before. And the lack of land meant that they weren't able to hunt anymore. They weren't able to move off this land because of the Dawes Act. And they therefore had to farm, and this was a change to their traditional way of life. And not only this, it meant they had no opportunity to practice traditions which were really important to them, like hunting and the buffalo dances and religious practices that they'd had that went along with that. And there was no opportunity for them to kind of uh, practice with other tribes, things like the counting coop and things which got them lots of um, kind of respect for bravery or skill in battle. The native Indians were also forced by law to follow US laws instead of tribal ones. So they were losing their identity as a result of the Dawes Act which was passed. So although the Battle of Little Bighorn in many ways was a massive success because they killed the army completely that attacked them, it also led to a law which massively limited the native Indians' um, ability to carry on with their traditional way of life. And that wasn't the end of it. One of the last uh, battles or conflicts between the native Indians and the American settlers was the Battle of Wounded Knee, which happened in South Dakota, which is sort of in the central North America. Uh, the cause of this battle, um, which came immediately after the successful Battle of Little Bighorn, was partly um, the Dawes Act, which had forced people into smaller reservation areas. Um, and had also led to a fear of army invasion. People were quite worried that the army might be coming after their particular uh, Sioux nation or Cheyenne nation or just native Indian nation, wherever they happen to live. Um, and they were afraid that uh, that could happen any time. So there was increasing tension. Also, uh, there was a cult spreading um, known as the Ghost Dance Cult, um, which spread the idea that um, any day soon, um, in the late 1880s or 1890s, um, all of the ancestors, the dead ancestors of the native Indians would return and help the native Indians to reclaim all the lost land that they'd lost to the um, US settlers. And all of these things led to a lot of upset and increasing tension within the native Indian communities. Um, and it led to the event, the Battle of Wounded Knee in 1890. The army, or a group of soldiers anyway, tried to disarm the Sioux um, who were living at a place called Wounded Knee Creek in South Dakota. And as they tried to take their arms from them, fearing that they were getting a little bit unruly and that they might rise up against the army and they'd have a repeat of Little Bighorn, um, what actually happened was 153 of the Sioux people were killed. Um, so it was another tragedy, another mass slaughter. And the outcome of the event was an announcement um, in 1890 that officially the frontier was closed. So the original agreement that was the east of America, there was a line beyond which um, all of America was native Indian land. Um, and that kind of frontier slowly, slowly, slowly um, gone further west. Now in 1890, the American settlers announced that that frontier was closed, it didn't exist anymore. So 1890, the year of the Battle of Little Bighorn uh, and the Battle of Wounded Knee is generally accepted as the end of the period of conflict between the native Indians and the US settlers, the white settlers, um, which had lasted from the 1860s to 1890. I want you to use the information that you've learned about these two battles and from watching the previous videos to answer the following question. It's an eight mark question, so it's a C question from paper one. Uh, remember, get three extra marks for spelling, punctuation and grammar. And the question is, the Battle of Little Bighorn was a complete success for the Sioux Nation. So the Battle of Little Bighorn was a complete success for the Sioux Nation. How far do you agree with this interpretation? 
that's the end of this podcast. Good luck with your exam.